Well, when you think about Murray State basketball, you think about tradition, whether that's championships, former coaches, or former players. Well, the good thing about Racer Hoopalooza, they're all under one roof. The Mayfield Cardinals were very honest with themselves after last year's state semifinals loss, saying that they got beat in the trenches. Whether it's lifting weights or running the 40-yard dash outside, the goal of a pro day is to impress the NFL scouts with everything you do. And for Damani Taylor, he's been working on these drills ever since the end of last season. The jersey was given to Chiefs General manager Greg McKeel who used it as a template copying everything down to the last stitch for the jerseys that the Chiefs use now. After her wins in the 2013 U.S. Women's Amateur and the 2015 National Championship, Emma Talley struggled in the following weeks. With the future of PIR up in the air, the locks on these gates will remain. And if that continues, several local drivers could be shutting their doors as well. Austin McGinnis's 47 yard field goal last season to beat Louisville. It was a turning point for the Kentucky Wildcats. Not only did it give them their seventh win of the season, their most since 2009, it snapped a five game losing streak against the Cardinals and gave Kentucky their first win over a top 15 team in seven years. They would meet for the Governor's Cup this afternoon once again at Kroger Field in oh, Lexington. Kentucky the leads the all time series 15 to 14. Pick things up first quarter, seven to nothing. Louisville on the move again. Lamar Jackson, the keeper, he's hit out of bounds around the two yard line. But that's when you start seeing there's so much bad blood in this rivalry. The pushing back and forth ensues. Jackson and Kentucky's Jordan Jones go at it. They were both penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct. They would stay in the game. Cardinals would score one play later, but Kentucky responded. Benny Snell Jr. at the one, the touchdown run, 14 to seven as they cut into the Cardinals lead. To the second we go now, 17 to seven. Jackson to Reggie Bonifon. He has room. Touchdown as he dives in, 11 yards out. Louisville goes up 24 to seven. Then on their very next drive, Jackson to the air, showing off the arm, and it's a beautiful throw. Des Fitzpatrick makes the touchdown grab, and the route was on. 44-17, Louisville in a big route here from the Cardinals and Wildcats tonight at 10. Staying in the SEC, Tennessee closing out their season against Vanderbilt. The Vols trying to avoid going winless in conference play for the first time in school history. First quarter, game tied at seven. John Kelly dives over the top for the one-yard touchdown. Touchdown Tennessee, Vols go up 14 to seven, but Vandy would tie it up in the second. Then just before the half, it's Kyle Shermer looking for a target and finds one in Khalil Lipscomb, wide open, 30 yard touchdown. Vandy up seven at the break. Then in the fourth, now 21 to 17. Vandy, believe it or not, they're extending their lead. Touchdown, and Tennessee's misery gets worse. Right now, Vanderbilt leading 42 to 17 late in the fourth quarter. Well, two weeks ago, the Purdue Boilermakers handed over the keys to Caldwell County alum Elijah Sindelar. And at that time, Purdue needed two wins in their final three games to become bowl eligible for the first time in five years. Well, they picked up that first win last week, so Sindelar needed to lead his team to a win today. And they would need to do it against their rivals in Indiana. Sindelar threw for over 230 yards and three touchdowns in their win last week over Iowa. Late in the second quarter, Purdue already up 14 to 7, looking for more. Sindelar throws a dime. Makes the catch. Anthony Mahangu, 49 yard touchdown strike. Boilermakers up 21 to 10 at the half. Jump to the fourth, now 24 to 10. Inside the five yard line, Sindelar goes the other way, finds Isaac Zicko, the four yard touchdown. He had 159 yards passing, so not his best game, but two touchdowns. More importantly, no interceptions. Purdue wins 31 24. We'll hear it from Mr. Sindelar tonight at 10. The well, Kentucky Football Coaches Association released their first region players of the year this afternoon. In Class 1A, Crittenden County's Hunter Boone brings home that award. He threw for over 3,600 yards and 32 touchdowns this season. In Class 2A, it's Mayfield linebacker and running back Kyle Hurt. He scored 10 touchdowns and leads the Cardinals so far this season in tackles. They'll play in the state championship, of course, this Saturday. And in Class 4A, Jordan Harmon from Paducah Tillman is player of the year. Harmon accounted for over 1,000 yards of offense this season. The Coaches Association also named their coach of the year in Class 1A, Crittenden County's Al Star takes home the honors in his last season in Class 2A. Joe Morris of Mayfield wins the award in Class 3. It's Caldwell County's David Barnes and in Class 6A. McCracken County's Mark Clark is Coach of the Year. Well, tonight at the CFSB Center in Murray, the Murray State Racers will meet Southern Illinois for the 35th time in series history. SIU leads the series with 18 wins. Murray's 
16 wins. The Lukies have won the last two in the rivalry, including last year's four-point win in overtime. The Racers looking for their third win of the season will have full coverage tonight at 10. Of course, it's the anniversary, four-year anniversary of Barry Henson going on the rant. We'll have more on that tonight as well. In the end, it's just cloth and thread. But to Reed Pope, it's much more than that. Putting that jersey on means something a little special to me. For the Paducah Chiefs outfielder, that jersey is the same one his grandfather, Richard Throgmorton, wore playing for the Chiefs in the 1950s. But it's a big thing for me to do something and follow the footsteps of my grandfather. There were so many stories that Dad shared with us, and then when Reed was given the opportunity, we've just been so excited about it. Despite passing away months before the Chiefs played their first game last season, Throgmorton's impact on his former team can easily be seen. My mother knew that she had the uniform in her closet and she wanted to do something with it in honor of him. The jersey was given to Chiefs General Manager Greg McKeel, who used it as a template, copying everything down to the last stitch for the jerseys that the Chiefs use now. So this is the jersey that he would show us whenever we'd all go over to his house. He'd show all my cousins and my brother and sister. And I actually haven't got to see it in quite some time, so it's pretty neat getting to see it. It just couldn't be a more prouder moment to think about him playing and, and wearing something that his grandfather was part of. And although he isn't here to see his grandson play, the Pope's no throg Morton is close by. His grandmother, she's probably one of the loudest fans here, and I think the reason why she is is because she's yelling for not only her grandson, but she's also throwing a cheer in for my dad. It makes me feel like my grandfather's right there with me. Whenever I put on that jersey, he's there. Which is why every time he steps on the field, wearing a simple jersey means something more to Pope. In Paducah, Adam Wells, WPSD, Local 6 Sports. The Mayfield Cardinals were very honest with themselves after last year's state semifinals loss, saying that they got beat in the trenches. And what they did in the offseason was hit the weight room. And tonight, especially in the second half where it hurt them last season, it paid off in a big way. This game was in the back of our head since the beginning of summer practice. They were just pounding us and pounding us every time we was in the weight room telling us, y'all remember they hurt that uh, when they beat us, just put it in your heart and push and grind through it every time. One year ago, you know, we, had, we left there with a bad taste in our mouth. We got beat by a very good football team, and we just beat a very good football team. You know, our guys are just resilient. They've worked their tail off to get to this point. I got to give all our guys credit. Those are their offensive line, defensive line, just, just you know, were, they were uh, undersized there, but I'm telling you what, we, our guys play with a lot of heart tonight. Well, after a brief hiatus, the Mayfield Cardinals are returning to play for a state championship, a place they have been eight out of the last nine seasons. In Mayfield, I'm Adam Wells, WPSD, Local 6 Sports.